Hello everyone, in this example we are going to see how to do a 2D time-lapse inversion. For the time-lapse survey you need to see the changes in resistivity in subsurface. This type of survey is really good for seeing the changes due to a tracer injection analysis. To do this you will select 2D, inverse and check time-lapse survey. Then you would select your file formats which for this example would be protocol DC and then import all of your data sets at the same time. Please bear in mind it is very important to import the files in the order that the surveys were conducted because recipe will consider the first input file for example 0.dat in here as your background measurement. So if you order these files in ascending or descending format it depends on the first file so I have to select ascending and import them all at once as you can see you would see the first data set 0 appear as the first one you can select contour in here and you can see the pseudo sections over time as you can see an anomaly is happening in this area so let's try to invert that and see the changes. You also can uh, define the electric layout. I'm using default for this one, which would be a flat survey uh, on the surface with 24 electrodes with one meter of spacing. Also, you can do some pre-processing on your data sets. You can remove points that make no sense and if you have reciprocal measurements you can define error models it is important because error models can help the inversion run more smoothly I am going to make a mesh with a depth of 4 meter and that's so fine and then use a triangular mesh the next step would be to define the inversion settings and bear in mind, because you're using time-lapse, and this the only uh, time that the A-weight and B-weight can be default is background. But after that, since you're looking at the changes, these values might be too high, because the changes might be very small. So if your inversion shows a fatal error, and it's not uh, showing any changes, you have to come back here and change these two to lower values. I'm going with the default for this example. And then you can invert your data. If you have large surveys and with uh, thousands of numbers of measurements that may take a lot of time for you. As you can see you're seeing the changes in this area happening over time in the inverted contour plot. Alright, I'm not going to discuss this for now because I want to show you a very good benefit of using recipe and that is parallel inversion in which you can invert all of your data at the same time. The downside is that you would not see the pseudo section over time but your inversion will happen a lot faster. This is very good if you have large surveys with a big number of time steps. What recipe does is inverse the background and then run all the other inversions at the same time. As you can see the inversion happened much faster. Alright, in here you can select which data set to be shown. By default it would be the first one or your background and then you can select the other type data sets. As you can see we are seeing an anomaly happening in here because there are other fixed anomalies or structures you might not be able to see these changes very sharply. It is very good to use a parameter which is the difference between the inversions. As you can see, the fixed structures are now gone. I am going to select 
a maximum of 150% change and apply that and then if I select number two you can see the only thing that you are seeing is the changes over time rather the structures of the fixed anomalies you can contour this and see the changes over time you also can use a different color map you can use the depth of investigation to guess if your anomaly is within the depth of investigation which for this example is and also you can go to the post processing and see the normalized error for each of your files if any of them has gone as what you didn't expect for example this one you can come back and filter them either apply filter to all of them or apply filter individually this seems to be a good inversion overall so I'm not gonna change that for now uh, or maybe I do that uh, let's do apply to a each and then define a minimum of minus three percent and maximum of three percent and click apply filter now if I look at all the files nothing should be outside the range that I just defined And I can go back and invert this and see if that helps the inversion. For this clean data set, it probably is not going to show any differences. But if you have a, a lot of structures that are not changing, then it's good to use that, uh, that feature. And bear in mind, the first data set, which is your reference data set, would not have a difference attribute in here. So you would see this at your first one. Okay.